सुना रही है सीटी बजा रही है It is an organization that carries over 2.3 crore passengers a day and over 1000 million tons of freight a year. It has a total track length of 1.16 lakh kilometers. In FY14, Indian Railways had revenues of 1.4 lakh crore of which 94000 crore came from freight and 37500 crore came from passenger tickets. Indian Railways subsidize passengers. The loss per passenger kilometer is 23 paise as of March 2014. Partly because of this, Railways is always cash strapped. In the latest year, it reported a loss of 30000 crores in the passenger segment. Operating ratios stood at a pathetic 94%. That means railways spend 94 paise to earn one rupee. No surprise, it was left with a meager surplus of 690 crores in the latest year. Here's how much Indian railways have fallen short of their own plans. In the past 10 years, 99 new line projects worth 60,000 crores were sanctioned, out of which only one project is completed till date. In fact, there are four projects that are as old as 30 years but are still not completed for one reason or the other. In the last 30 years, as many as 676 projects were sanctioned worth 1 and 1/2 lakh crore, of which only 317 projects could be completed. The balance 359 projects will now require as much as 1.8 lakh crore. Last year the arrest of a railway board member after he was caught bribing the minister's nephew just so that he could get a lucrative post as a member in charge of giving out railway electricity contracts epitomized the corruption in the system little has changed since a word on the history of this 160 year old railway system it took less than 25 years for the quadrilateral connecting the four metros to be built by the british each hill railway took less than a decade to be commissioned and this happened in an era when both technology and transportation were primitive that 80% of the route that we now have was built in the first 94 years and the balance 20% took the last 67 years to be built says it all Well, that's the measure of the problem. A loss-making, a huge department with huge social responsibility, as well. This at a time when the country was largely growing at five and six percent growth. But if it were to grow at seven percent growth, uh, then the amount of freight it will have to move and the amount of passengers it will have to move will only increase manifold. So, as the new railway minister takes charge. the task is cut out for him in this particular department there are ideological questions structural questions and executive questions that need to be raised and answered and to do precisely that i am being joined by three special guests who have a lot of experience with railways dinesh trivedi former railway minister of the tmc who of course uh, has uh, 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 so much experience in what exactly ticketing prices should have and what the railways need uh, to become profitable mr s b ghosh dastidar the former member traffic at the railway board he's been honored with the padma shri and mr akhilesh sahai akhileshwar sahai who was on deputation to konkan railway and an expert on the subject he was also advisor to the delhi metro project gentlemen thank you very much for wait uh, uh, joining me in this conversation uh, i just want to tell you that i'm trying to handle a lot of issues and so maybe we should keep our questions and answers brief i want to discuss first are we running a, a, a public service or are we running a business i want to uh, discuss whether r- r- railways have to be corporatized and the ministry only makes policy decisions i want to uh, uh, check out if we can re uh, organize the administration not as electrical mechanical but more as accounts operations like any corporate is uh, organized and uh, uh, some uh, specific questions on how corruption can be tackled since there's a lot on the plate uh, if we can be brief and uh, decisive in the position you take uh, mr minister or former minister trivedi uh, do you think we have the time has come to say that we are not running a service we are not running government we are running business is that the first question that uh, uh, mr prabhu has to answer well uh, lata let me tell you you have got all the right issues on hand mm. uh, <laughs> nowhere in the world mm. uh, railway is a business 
Railways is a catalyst. You know, road for instance or river by itself is not a business. They are catalysts to move forward your economy and they are the ones like railway can make sure that Indian economy grows at the rate of 10 percent for next 10 years without a problem. So, I take so your point. To answer I take your brief, point. Either, neither, yeah. 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 I take your yeah. point. Uh, what you're saying is like we have education or like public health, like agriculture, we have to ensure that it runs well. It cannot Correct. be run as a business. Uh, but my point is can we afford Correct. 23, 23 paise per passenger kilometer? The extent of the subsidy and the targeting of the subsidy is certainly an issue. If Ten, okay, let me uh, get that uh, uh, to you, Mr. Ghosh. Uh, can we, uh, first of all, this question. Uh, uh, Mr. Trivedi says it's a social service and it cannot be run as a business, has not been run anywhere. Your answer to that, and secondly, can it be segregated? I mean, you can run 90% like freight as a business and run 10% as a service. Is that possible, Mr. Uh, Ghosh? Railway is a commercial organization in nature, though it has some social responsibilities also. For the most of the part, it has to be run in a, on a commercial principle as a business organization. Railway ministry is totally different from all other ministries of central government. All other ministries get grants, outright grants. Mm. Railway earns every penny it spends. Mm. Now the greatest drag on present railway is its subsidy for passenger, which is not coming from the general exchequer, but it cross-subsidized from freight to passenger. Mm -hmm. Railway's freight today is the cheapest in the whole world, cheaper than China, one-fourth of China. Mm -hmm. And its freight is one of the highest. Mm -hmm. It is only because of this cross-subsidization. Mm -hmm. As a result, the poor people of the country, they have to bear the burden. Mm -hmm. They, it is on them an indirect taxation because essential commodities, they, they move by railways mm -hmm. and they have to pay more for that. Moreover, the Indian railways, uh, the India's export uh, products, mm. they become costlier and uncompetitive in the world Absolutely. market because of the high uh, freight rate. Yes. Therefore, what is needed by railway is that most of the operation should run on the commercial basis, mm. but as Mr. Tribedi yes. has correctly pointed out, it is a engine for growth for the country mm. and uh, see at the beginning of the uh, uh, 1950s mm. when we got independence mm. Indian Railway was much a bigger organization compared to Chinese Railway. Mm. Chinese has surpassed. Indian Railway used to carry 80% of freight and only 20% used to go by road. Yes. Now it is just the opposite No, no. So what you, would you agree with Why it has happened? Yeah. Because Kindly, just mm. it has happened because both central and state government mm. has literally spent, invested lakhs, cro lakhs of crores of rupees for development of road, mm. but they have not give, spent a penny on railways. Mm. They give a subsidy. Sir, they yeah. don't Sir give your a point is made. They give a budgetary support. I, I, I take it, Mr. Ghosh, your point they, is well made, but what I'm asking you is a more pointed thing. I completely take your point that uh, uh, the, the, gross, the uh, gross budgetary uh, support is needed for a large part for the railways which it has been denied. But no, would you say no, that... you have not you, got my point. Yes. You have not got my point. Go gross ahead. budgetary support is nothing but a soft loan given to the railways. What railway need is outright grant also for expansion of its... Uh, mm. Uh, network mm. where it is it cannot be run on a financially viable basis. Okay. So there has to be made two distinctions. Majority portion run on commercial basis and for social development the portion it should come and run. It should be constructed by uh, public grant. That is uh, uh, outright done from the Ministry of Finance. Point taken, point taken. It, it's the segregation that I'll come to you uh, uh, as to how it should be done, uh, time permitting. Uh, on that issue, uh, Mr. Sahai, uh, what would your views be? Is it possible to have targeted subsidies which must straight away come from the budget and the rest of it run commercially? Is that possible? Any views on that? In, in fact, Lata, to be honest enough, mm. that is what has to be precisely done. Mm. A, the railways have to run on commercial principle, mm. number one. B, all the subsidies, government has to take the responsibilities, railways cannot be made accountable for 
social obligation. Mm. There is absolutely no confusion about that. Mm. A time has come mm. today mm. when a clear difference has to be made uh, between railways as a commercial organization and the social obligations. Mm. Social obligations become the responsibility of government of India, not railways. Mm. So that part is very, very clear. Mm. Second part, as Mr. Ghosh Dastidar was telling, yes, if you really look at the, the construction and development of railways across the globe, mm. that will have to become the responsibility of government of India and not the railways because railways not, is not even in a position to do that. No, but if you, ha if you run it commercially, you if you run it commercially, sir, how, yeah. how does Reliance expand? How no. does Tata Motors expand? From the profits it expands. I no, take your no, point no, that no, subsidies no. have to come Let from uh, the uh, from the exchequer. But for expansion, railways can yeah, be run yeah. in a way to generate surplus? Okay, no. Let me, let me just take a leap. Yes. I will not take more than a minute. Yes. If you look at uh, the honest fact, mm. that uh, if you look at our entire five-year plan, 12 five-year plan, it is five, five lakh, five lakh thousand crore. Mm. Look at what China is spending in a year, this year. It is seven lakh crores. Okay. Now, if, if you have to take railways to a le different level, if you have to complete your dedicated freight corridors, if you have to complete your bullet train projects, if you have to go to the strategic areas, the sim railways simply cannot do it mm. on its own. Mm. No railway undertaking in India is going to create the type of resources which are required to totally transform okay. railways from the way they are today. All right. I'll take your point on that. Since all you three gentlemen agree on one thing, that uh, railways can be run commercially, but subsidies must come uh, from the government uh, for the targeted subsidized portion. And your point is that expansion also should be the problem of the exchequer. Uh, well, we have to take a break at this juncture. I'll come back and look, for, look at the organization part. Corporatizing the railways, is that the answer? In a minute with my guests.